Okay. Finding the X and Y components can take some time, especially if there's two forces. And finding the centroid is a pain. So I'm going to show you how to do it using an Excel spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are used by engineers all the time. Now, I'm, I'm going to do set some work up here. And if you have any spreadsheets for it, so what? So we're just going to type in some information. So if I have a, uh, a, a straightforward one, if I just have some force F, and I'm just going to put equals, and I'm going to put my number in there. And then I have some angle. And I'm going to put that angle number in there. So if I have a force of 240 pounds, and I have an angle of 65 degrees. Okay? Now, I want to know what is my F sub Y, and I want to know what my F sub X. I want to know what my Y and X components of that force are. Okay? And so, all I have to, so what I do is I put a formula. Now, to put in a formula, you press the equals. See the equals up here? I press the equal sign and that puts it into formula mode. And then I use those numbers I've already put in and we know that it is F -Y, F y equals the force times the sine of the angle. So my force is this. I click on that box and it puts that number in here. And then it's times, which is the asterisk or whatever you call it there. And then I'm going to put in, I need a parenthesis because Excel works in radians, and so I need to convert degrees to radians, so I type R, A, D, and you can see that it pops up here. I double click on it and it puts it in automatically and puts in my first parentheses. And then I want my angle. Well, here's my angle right here. And then I close that parentheses, close the second parentheses, and I believe that, oh, and then, I'm sorry, that's not right, because I still have to add in, I'm not time to the angle, it's times sine of that angle. Okay, oops, yeah, it's going to tell me what the sine function is. All right, so you type it in just one letter there, and then I can do that, and it automatically changes. I put that in open parentheses. That a close parentheses, click outside of it somewhere, and that's my force. You can see up here, that's my force times the sine of the angle converted to radians. And I can do the same thing. I can also, in here, I can just drag it down, home, fill, down, and now I have sine of the radians. Now that's not quite correct because my force, remember, this is how I do it. This is D4 and D6. So I've got, that's not, it's, I need to change that to a 4 and that to a 6. And now I get the same number. Oh, because this shouldn't be sine. This should be cosine. Okay, so this is, if you look up here, this is sine, and this is cosine. And so now, once I've done that, all I have to do is put in a number. Okay, now it's 380 pounds, and it's 120 degrees. Bam. Not only that, look at that guy. It's already converted to a negative because I'm at 120. I'm in the second quadrant, so it's going to go in the negative this way, it's going to go in the positive y, but the negative x direction. So just by making this little thing, and look, you can make this look really official. I can highlight the whole thing, right click, click on this, do that, and I got a little chart here that I can automatically, all I do is put in my force, put in my angle, and it does all my calculations. It takes you, you know, five minutes to make it, but if you have a, if you have a hundred calculations to do, think about how fast that would be. Now, if I want to do the more complicated one where I have two forces, okay, then I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how to do that too. I have an F1, that's my first force, and I'm just typing that in because that's not a formula. And I have, I'm going to put my, put these together, 
angle one. I'll skip a space here to keep them separate. F2, hit enter. Angle two. Okay, so that's my data. Everything else is gonna be formulas. Okay, so I need to find out my F, Y, one. I'm gonna find my F, Y, two. Skip a space. F, X, one. F, X, two. And then I, oh, because I'm going to add them up, so you should put, I can right click here and insert a row so I got a little more space because in here I'm going to have my total y and here total x. Okay, so that's just the data, that's just the labels. So now to do the formulas, Okay, so F1, so that, okay, these here. So now um, to find my F1, FY1, I click here, I hit equals, puts me in formula mode. So that is going to be my force one, which is going to be right here, times parentheses. And I'm just going to have the sine of the radians of my angle, which is right here. And then close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. And that'll give me that. And this is going to be the same thing. So it's going to be, uh, actually this one, I'm going to let me hit escape. This one I can pretty much home fill down. I've got to check on it because it's not going to be quite right. I want instead of D14, I want angle one. I, I want it to be this angle right here. So I need this to be D16. And my force is going to be at right here, 15. So now you can see, see they're highlighted. 15 and 16, force and angle. So I know I got that right. Okay, so those are good. And then down here, equals F, oh, not F, ha. And I'm doing a formula. So I want my, this is my, did I do that right? Yes. So now I want this times parentheses Oh, that sign. I want cosine of radians of my angle, which is that one. Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. And I'm just going to do this without copying because I find that that's getting that was getting too confusing. So now I want my Second one, so I want my, this force times parentheses. Oh, again, keep wanting to do sine. Cosine radians. My angle is here. And then close, close, close. And this. All right? So if I had, for example, my force one was... 240 pounds at an angle of 35 degrees, and my second force was 480 pounds at an angle of um, oh, 160 degrees. Look, I already, gave, I already did my negatives here. So that gives me my forces, but now I need to add them up. So this is another one equals, and to add things, I put in sum, this one right here, sum of, and look, I highlight both of them, 
and it puts the first one a colon and the second one that means everything there and hit enter that'll give me the sum of that and equals sum of these two close parentheses and enter okay and you can see I actually got a negative total X now I so that gives me my numbers this gives me my X and Y components so my X is going to go this way and then my Y is going to go up so I've got a triangle like that now I want to find out the resultant and to do that I need my what do I need Pythagorean okay resultant and so that is going to be I need the square root of a squared plus b squared right that's how you solve it so square root is s well I got to put my equal sign in there or I get nothing s q square root right there s q r t of I need my my totals here so I need this and this carrot is squared plus the other one here squared and even though that's a negative number when I square it negative goes away so everything works out hunky-dory all right and then I hit enter so that's my resultant that's how long my actual force is okay um, which is why I could draw a liner because basically the, but so then I want to know my angle and this one because it is a negative X it might it's going to give me f the the it's going to give me this angle here for this line so I need to do and this one I actually wrote it down because I, this one it's going to give me my angle in radians now I want it in degrees so I hit equals and I got to type in this degrees this will take my answer and convert it from radians to degrees and it's going to be the inverse tangent or the arc tangent a tan of my opposite which would be my y divided by my adjacent which would be my x let's see what this goes with the negative number I'm not a hundred percent sure and I need one more to get everything to, op to open, to close, and yep. So I got an angle of uh, hmm, minus 49 degrees. What would that be? That would be 49 degrees going up this way, I guess. Uh, I might need to make that absolute value. Let's see. If I go up here, since those could be, um, oops. absolute value of that divided by the of that let's try this out oh, I just got a positive number okay I guess it's the same all right so by putting different things in here so and that one like I said because of the uh, 160 let's see if I put 65 degrees instead now I get a 55 so that 49 must have been off of this a negative 45 must have been coming up this way so by doing that but you if you did one of these on that worksheet then you know how long this would take but now I can just punch numbers in here and let's see if I do get one that is 240 degrees I get uh, negative here negative total X a little bit and I get an angle of 81 okay so this is a way to another way of I can make a chart out of that it just looks better and it's easier to follow so using spreadsheets is a really powerful tool 